vulnerabilities have been found in almost every processor in the world. Even ARM chips got loopholes. You can ask any owner of the Nintendo Switch. Why do such errors happen at the design stage? There are also so-called backdoors that are incorporated on the hardware level on purpose. We'll mention that as well. But what should you do if you find out that your processor is at risk? How do they even find these vulnerabilities and why they exist? This is MK. Today we'll tell you about security issues in modern chips. Let's go! Many of us heard about processor vulnerabilities for the first time in 2018 when Spectre and Meltdown were found. These loopholes affected almost all processors and systems that existed at that time, and the patches designed to fix them would hurt the system's performance. Since then, new security issues started popping up like never before, and just the other day, another vulnerability called Reptar was discovered, which can cause current Intel processors to fail. But such vulnerabilities are not new at all. They have happened before, and a lot. For example, the legendary Intel 386 processors. They appeared in 1985 and were the first solutions supporting 32-bit computing which is what we still use to this day. Turned out that some of the chips, when working with 32-bit code, produced incorrect results, which is why the company had to recall the already released processors to run additional checks. As a result, good chips were marked with a double sigma and faulty chips were marked as suitable only for 16-bit computing and were sold cheaper. And in 1994, the processors of the new Pentium lineup could not cope with a task that any high school student could do. The first Pentiums made bad mistakes when dividing floating point numbers by each other. And any user could encounter this. The FDIV bug could kick in when operating hexadecimal values. At that time, Intel decided to play silent. The company knew full well that they were releasing faulty processors to the market. And when the issue went public, Intel representatives said it would only affect the work of some sort of mathematicians, scientists. And if you want to replace a defective processor for a new one, prove that the bug actually interferes with your work, if that's how smart you are. This, of course, caused a wave of discontent, and Intel was forced to back down, agreeing to recall the faulty chips for everyone who wanted it, which cost the corporation as much as $475 million. But a really serious security loophole was created by Intel in 1997. It is then that the system management mode appeared in Pentium processors, in which the execution of any third-party code is suspended and a special program stored in a protected memory area is launched. This mode was used for debugging the processor, so access to it is similar to God mode. The permissions granted by this mode are higher than any system access which allows you to do anything, from flashing the BIOS to recording key presses. I don't need to tell you what kind of opportunities such a mode would open to hackers. I'll just say that it existed in Intel processors for almost 15 years, until the release of the second-gen Core lineup in 2011. Quite a life cycle. Just FYI, the vulnerability was officially discovered only in 2015. And although Intel released a patch that fixed that loophole, hardly any of the manufacturers of the LGA-775 motherboards released a corresponding BIOS update. So your 775 Xeon has a hole in it. But Intel is not the only one having such issues. In 2007, AMD launched the 4-core Phenom processors, which were supposed to compete with the Core 2 Quad. The new processors had a new L3 cache, which was supposed to increase the performance quite a bit. But it turned out that a more or less significant load on the L3 caused the processor to fail. The software fix of this bug led to a loss of performance by an average of about 20%. And the hardware fix appeared only 6 months later with a new revision of the Phantom processors. Sometimes a manufacturer does know about the loophole, but still releases the processor hoping that no one will notice. This is the case with Downfall, which exploits the AVX2 and AVX512 instructions, gaining access to confidential data through them. It affects Intel Core processors from the 6th to the 11th gen, including Xeon server solutions. And the total number of vulnerable chips exceeds several hundred million. 
Intel has known about it since at least 2018, but remained silent. This loophole is talked about actively only starting this year, and a couple of months ago, the company rolled out a security patch that can reduce performance in tasks involving AVX instructions up to 50%. And by the way, these instructions are already actively utilized in games, video processing, and rendering. Of course, Intel was sued for this, but usually such lawsuits last for years and don't cost the companies too much. In addition, these processors are already discontinued, so the corporation has already made its profit. In the last decade, devices on ARM chips have gained a huge popularity, and the holes were found in them too. A couple of years ago, a bug of the command handler driver was found in a dozen MediaTek SoCs, which allowed to gain access to SE Linux which is the kernel security module. This allowed users to gain root access, also known as administrator privileges. Initially, this loophole was just used to get root on cheap Amazon Kindle Fire tablets. But researchers quickly realized that this was a serious vulnerability that allowed hackers to get deep into Android on hundreds of models with MediaTek chips. And although Google helped MediaTek quickly put together a patch, this didn't help. The affected devices were cheap and run on old versions of Android from 7 to 9, so most manufacturers turned a blind eye to the vulnerability, although they were aware that hackers were actively exploiting it. But don't blame it all on MediaTek only. Currently, more than 1,700 various vulnerabilities have been found in Qualcomm ARM chips, from harmless to serious, allowing to steal keys from the secure chip area called Trust Zone. So yes, hardware bugs and loopholes have existed in many processors throughout the history. But sometimes such security breaches are actively exploited by users, and the latter are grateful to the manufacturers. In the 2000s, users found out that some 4-core Phenom processors were actually 6-core, while 3-core Athlon CPUs had 1-core disabled and cache decreased on the software level disabled cores could be easily turned back on. The manufacturers of the boards kindly added a special setting in the BIOS for this, which was usually called Unlock CPU Core. One of the reasons for this is binning, about which we talked in one of our videos. The fact is that it is too costly for the chip makers to produce different dies for each processor model. It is much cheaper to set up the production of one or two kinds of dies and then modify them to the desired level. Usually, the chip's functions are restricted either at the hardware level by removing special jumpers on the die or in the firmware of the processor, which a user will not be able to reach in any way. But back then, AMD decided to cut a corner and disable the cores and cache only programmatically at the bias level, which allowed to get a full-fledged higher-tier processor in just a couple of clicks. Of course, in some cases, the disabled parts of the chip were indeed defective and turning them on would cause BSOD but in most cases, it really did work. And of course, everyone knows about the bug in NVIDIA Tegra X1 chip, which is used in the Nintendo Switch. Thanks to it, the console is hackable, and the greedy Japanese did not succeed in trying to fix it with patches. Therefore, $70 games no longer need to be purchased. Everything became available for free, and even with the processor and GPU overclocked. Intel has given such pleasant gifts to users as many as three times, two of which by the same stinginess. Greed played a cruel joke with the company that allows to overclock only processors with the K-Index on expensive Z-boards, although in fact these CPUs are no different from simpler solutions with other indices. With the release of the 6th generation core processors, the first BIOS for Z170 boards had a function for overclocking any Skylake processors through the bus. The loophole was fixed by updates, but you can't force users to flash their boards, so many people managed to save quite a bit by getting a cheaper i5-6400 and overclocking it as a more expensive i5-6600K, often getting a performance gain of one and a half times. The funny part is that the same thing happened in the 12th generation. Some mid- and top-tier LGA-1700 boards have external clock generators, which allows for overclocking of any older Lake CPU through the bus. Not only the Z690, where CPU overclocking is officially allowed, but also the B660, which formally can only overclock memory. As a result, the i5-12400F, overclocked to 5GHz, turned out to be the people's favorite gaming processor. A vivid example familiar to many is the Xeon with the Turbo Boost Unlocked, 
Even 10 years ago, server-grade processors had heating problems, especially when working with demanding AVX instructions. So Intel went for a trick. When performing such tasks using these instructions, the processor clock speed would drop. And so it was, until a bug was found in the operation of this mechanism. One that allows you to make the CPU work at the maximum frequency, always turbo-boosting one core. This often brought an extra 10% performance on the table out of nothing. A good bonus, if your board can withstand the load, that is. As you can see, vulnerabilities in processors have always been and will be. Now, how do they appear? More importantly, do you need to protect yourself? Some of the loopholes happen due to access to the debugging mode of the chips. God mode in Intel processors or a MediaTek bug, they are unavoidable. Processor manufacturers need to configure their processors before the release, and if the processors have an advanced features mode, sooner or later, hackers will get into it. But do not worry too much, and don't disconnect the computer from the internet. Normally, service modes require physical access to the board and the processor for their hardware modification. In order to get access to data, manufacturers create some loopholes intentionally. Such intentional loopholes are referred to as backdoors. An additional computing component is embedded in the processor or board, which, when certain conditions are met, triggers the process of collecting data. For example, record keystrokes, analyze connected USB devices, and much more. A good example is the autonomous Intel Management Engine subsystem, a small microcontroller built into any Intel chipset since 2008. But the chipset is a full-fledged computer with its own processor, with a small amount of memory, and a closed system. It has its own MAC address, and direct access to Ethernet. Data storage devices and sound interfaces are often connected through the chipset. It has a direct DMI bus for communication with the processor. At the same time, the Intel ME firmware is not available either for users or for board manufacturers, and there are no official ways to disable this subsystem. In fact, Intel can use it to collect any data passing through the chipset and send it to the internet and I'm sure the company has already done it and is doing it right now. Intel ME firmware being closed did not prevent it from getting hacked. About five vulnerabilities were found in total, and one of them is very curious. It is called High Assurance Platform. This is an undocumented built-in mode that is created for use only by the US government agencies. In it, all Intel ME functions are disabled immediately after starting the computer. In fact, this confirms that Intel can indeed spy on users through the chipset, and there's nothing that can be done about it. By the way, that is why Russia has been gradually conditioning their government agencies to use the Russian Elbrus processors. Backdoors are vulnerabilities that are safe for the average user. They are mainly aimed at spying on top government officials, or at least on top managers of competing corporations. Remember that tantrum with Pegasus, that is when the iPhones of ministers or presidents were hacked via just one text message. Collecting data from the PC of an ordinary user is hardly interesting, except for maybe some kind of telemetry. But your computer probably has at least several such intentional backdoors from various manufacturers, and so long as they are not available for hackers, you can sleep peacefully. But still, most of the loopholes that were found were random. Modern processors consist of billions of transistors and work with thousands of various instructions. Engineers no longer configure them separately. Instead, they operate entire compute units. Everything else is done by computers. Machines make machines. Therefore, it is simply impossible to trace all the nuances of such a complex silicon in tests. The number of states of a modern processor is too large to calculate and check even on powerful supercomputers, it is not always possible to fully debug such a smart piece of silicon before it enters the market. A good example is Ryzen. In 2017, AMD's business was going badly, and the company desperately needed to quickly release its new solutions to the market. In a hurry, they decided to skip some of the tests for the Zen architecture, which gave birth to the VME bug. It consists in the incorrect implementation of one of the instructions, as a result of which, when running 16-bit software on a 32-bit system, a computer with Ryzen could freeze or BSOD. 
The problem obviously affects an extremely small number of people running old versions of Windows on virtual machines. But this is a good example of a random vulnerability that is difficult to notice at the design stage. By the way, the problem was solved by a simple update of a GSA. There are many vulnerabilities, they're different, they have been found and will be found. But what should we, regular users, do? I figure you've already guessed. Not a thing. The vast majority of modern loopholes are extremely difficult to exploit, often require physical access to a PC and steal a teaspoon of bits per hour. Therefore, such vulnerabilities are not interesting to most hackers working with the masses. It is much easier and more efficient to slip a software trojan into a torrent file or embed a fake download button on a website. No need to panic and install all the patches fixing these high-profile vulnerabilities. The chance that your PC will get hacked exactly this way is close to zero. But the performance loss may be significant and noticeable in your daily work. And even if Windows is smart enough to install a security update automatically, often the patch can be disabled. Yes, disable a security patch just because it hurts your performance. For example, for the notorious Meltdown Inspector, there's a small utility called Inspector. Disable the fixes for both vulnerabilities and voila! The increase in performance of your 10-year-old chip, which is already struggling, can be tangible. The number of transistors and chips, and accordingly, their complexity, is growing. Not at Moore's law, but growing quickly. Modeling the processors is getting more and more complicated. New chipsets with advanced buses appear. All of this means that vulnerabilities will only get bigger. In the future, or maybe even now, artificial intelligence will be taught to look for such vulnerabilities. But who knows, what if, on the contrary, it will be taught to create these backdoors, and then the programs that got too smart decide that we don't need to know about them. Only time will tell. We are following these technological developments, so follow with us on our channel. Subscribe. Have you seen on some channels now? The button starts glowing different colors when you say subscribe. This was MK. My name is Mikhail Krashen. Subscribe.